What's going on guys? Briar Rabbit here. Today is Friday. That means Zer is back in the tower. He's hanging out downstairs by the Crucible vendors. And he's got a pretty interesting inventory to say the least. A bit of old, a bit of new. Let's take a look. We'll start with the Titan gear. We got no backup plans. No backup plans in year one were completely forgettable. In year two, they've been improved and they're actually pretty good. So Force Multiplier Shotgun kills trigger force barrier and force barrier's duration is increased. This is a really good perk if you're using shotguns. It's going to work in PvE and in PvP. These things still look ridiculous. There's just something about them that make your Titan look like puny and weird. Uh, it'd be awesome if the shaders would affect that holographic effect so you could actually change the color of that because they never match any shader. But... I gotta say, these things have really stepped up their game. They're actually pretty useful now. Now, the intellect and strength rolls aren't super high. It'd be nice if they were higher, uh, but we'll talk about changing that a little bit more later. And it does have shotgun loader, which is really nice. So if you're running around in the Crucible with a shotgun, uh, not only are you getting faster reload speed, but you're also getting a force barrier every time you kill somebody with it. I think these things are getting slept on. I think we're gonna see a lot more people using them. All right, next for the Hunters, we got the Don't Touch Me Gauntlets. These things for Crota's End really came in handy. You could basically very easily solo the first part of the raid using a Hunter and the Don't Touch Me Gauntlets. But now, you know, Crota's End isn't really relevant anymore and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of call for these. Uh, defensive Reflex, taking damage from melee attacks makes you briefly invisible. If you're in a situation where you're getting meleeed a lot, you know, it's great to be able to go invisible and just kind of jump out of there. But in the current raid, that doesn't seem to happen a lot. A lot of your engagements are much longer range, so don't touch me is not really coming in handy. And in the Crucible, normally a melee attack is going to kill you right after a shotgun blast, so... These don't activate when you're dead, so they just don't come in handy that often. So this is probably just a skip overall. Next, we got the Stag. So this is for the Warlocks, and the main perk on this is Do or Die. Once per life, your super charges faster when your teammates are dead. Chance to respawn with an overshield. All right, imagine this in Trials of Osiris. Once per life, your super charges faster when your teammates are dead. If you're the last guardian standing on your team and all of a sudden your super starts charging faster, that could really come in handy. And a chance to respawn with an overshield, that would be good too. So I really like this for Trials of Osiris. You know, the chance to respawn with an overshield, probably better in 6v6. But still, your super charges faster when your teammates are dead. That is going to create a lot of clutch plays in the Trials of Osiris. Again, the rolls on this aren't super hot, but they're better than the other two, so mm, not too bad. All right, next our weapon is the Hereafter, and people are really digging on this exotic sniper rifle. Uh, the biggest problem with it is the zoom on the scope is a little bit too strong for most Crucible snipers, but people are liking it anyway, and the reason is blinding light. Precision kills with this weapon have a chance to cause a bright flash that can blind nearby enemies. That chance is nearly 100%. So if you headshot somebody and there's one or two people standing around near him, that bright flash will blind them. And I think that lasts for like six or seven seconds. So it really gives you an opportunity to get some follow-up kills. Again, in Trials of Osiris, if they're all standing, if the opposing team is all standing together and you headshot one of them, the other two are going to be a very easy cleanup. So I definitely recommend picking up the Hereafter. Get used to that scope because that blinding light perk is actually very, very strong. Next, we have a Legacy Heavy Weapon Engram. Again, with the heavy weapon. So if you're looking for a year one heavy weapon at year one power levels, you can take a chance, gamble on this. Try and get yourself a Truth or a Galahorn or a Thunderlord. But let's be honest, most people have already done this who wanted to. I think this is like the second or third week in a row it's been a heavy weapon engram. All right, down here for Curios, we got Void Drive and we got Stealth Drive. So if you want to upgrade your blue rare Sparrow to legendary status and change the color of the contrail, you can use these to do it. We got heavy ammo synthesis, but this is probably a 
too expensive way to buy it at this point. Of course, we got the infamous three of coins and we got a brand new material, the glass needle. So slivers of glassy material that appear to alter the flow of time around them, said to be used by the nine to transform the properties of exotic gear. So basically these things allow you to re-roll exotics and that is very cool so if you've got an exotic drop that you're not happy with the intellect roll or the discipline roll or you wish that it ro rolled with strength this is the way to go and of course we got the materials exchange for motes of light so let's try out some of these glass needles okay so here you can see my insurmountable skull for and while i'm really happy that this thing dropped at 310 defense i wasn't happy with the roll for this what i'd like to get is a combination of intellect and strength or pure strength. I don't think you can get pure strength anymore, but I'd like to see the strength stat very, very high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to Twist of Fate and we're gonna select it, hold it down, and it's gonna re-roll that stuff for us. So what we got was more discipline and strength. I can get my strength up to 56 but i'd like to get intellect as the side stat instead of discipline so i'm going to try this again twist of fate this is completely rng based there we go now i'm much happier so we got strength up to 54 and we got intellect i'm happy with this so what this doesn't do is change these side perks here like hands-on or invigoration uh, but it does change the roles that you have for your stat boost so if that's what you want to change about an exotic, this is the way to do it. If this is what you want to change about an exotic, then you're just going to hope for a better roll later on. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys later.